Let's uh, turn to Revelation 22. Let's have God speak to us. And may we know the reality of him giving us more grace and more of his love. Let's open our Bibles, the last chapter of the Word of God, Revelation 22. Let's pray. Lord God, almighty, loving Heavenly Father, we continue to worship you. And we pray as we turn to your word, we might know you speaking to us. We ask, feed us, Lord, and help us to know that uh, you speak and are speaking to every one of us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. We gaze again then at uh, glory and heaven and eternity as we open God's Word in Revelation and at chapter 22. Uh, we've uh, seen previously um, that heaven uh, will be a place of no mores, and uh, heaven will be a place that is far more, far more than we can ever imagine or think. And we saw in chapter 21, at verse 4, uh, some of uh, those no mores. So we turn to Re Revelation 21, verse 4. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No more tears, no more death. No more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. No more of all of those things which so many of us have known in these past days and continue to know. We trust God that there's a great tomorrow coming and there'll be no more tears, no more death. No more sorrow, crying, or pain. And our future will be far more than we can ever imagine. Far more wonderful. Um, we're going to focus this morning on just the first three verses of Revelation 22. Let me just read them again. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river uh, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees and tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Um, as you read those verses, um, it's obvious uh, the words that we're meant to pick out. Um, there's a river there, and there's life, and there's a tree of life, uh, and uh, there's God uh, and God's servants. And uh, by word association, um, we're taken all the way back to Genesis chapter 2. This is the language of Eden. Maybe we thought this morning of things that are common. Um, there are things here that are common to Eden, but this is not Eden. We're not going back to Eden. We're going to a far better than Eden. Um, and there are things that are different here as we look at this far better than Eden, and we'll hopefully pick them out. Um, we've been expelled from God's presence. We were once in God's presence in Eden, 
And as we were expelled, we were expelled under the curse. Uh, but we read here that there is no more curse. Uh, praise the Lord for verse 3. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb. Um, and how was the curse removed? And the curse is removed by the Lamb. Uh, one of the, of the words here that describe um, this new heaven and a new earth and a greater than Eden, uh, words that remind us of Eden, uh, the things that are different, one of them is, is the lambs here. There was no lamb in Eden. Um, let me be sure that you understand what I'm saying. The eternal Son of God was there. God was in Eden. But there's no sacrificial lamb in Eden. And the only way to, to get us back into communion with God is for this lamb. It's a lamb. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a sacrificial lamb. We, we get to a new heaven and a new earth, and we find the tree of life, and we find a river, and we find God, and we find the servants of God. Um, Adam and Eve, the servants of God. And we, we, but all of us now, the servants of God, and we're with God. And we're only there because there's a lamb here, a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And by his work and by his sacrifice, there's a certainty of heaven. But only, only through the lamb, we must come believing in the lamb of God. Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's, he's there and he has all the glory. So this is, this is Eden, but it's, but it's not a going back to Eden. It's far more than Eden. It's, it's not a garden. We're going to a glorified cosmos, far bigger and more amazing than we can ever imagine. So how does John picture all of this? So we've thought all the way through the book of Revelation, it's been a long journey, but what a blessed journey it's been. But all through it, we have said John is been helped by God to use words to describe the indescribable. We need to remember that, even here. Uh, there are, we're, we're shown and pictured great things, but, but it'll be better than this. But John, then, how does he describe what is describable? Well, he sees a river, just one river. Um, uh, if you are able to turn back, I'll just take you briefly to Genesis 2. Back to Eden then. There was a river in Eden. Uh, Genesis 2 verse 10 says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And then it says, And from thence it was parted and became four heads. But as John sees a better than Eden, uh, this fractured river is, is, is one now. Uh, much has been fractured because of the fall. There was one river in Eden. As it came out, it was parted and broken. But now we've got one river and only one river. And it's a pure river. Uh, The last verse of the last chapter, in the previous chapter, Revelation 21, 27, there shall be in, uh, in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, and then the next verse, Revelation 22, 1, just it says the same thing. This is a pure river. Uh, it's pure as crystal. There's no impurity. Many, many rivers on earth, uh, you don't want to drink river water. They're, they're all contaminated with something, some bug. But this is a pure river. And it's a river that's full of water. Um, but it's no normal water. This river flows with the water of life. We left Eden 
with only death. And what's before us, there's no more death. It's a pure river, and the waters are the waters of life. And it's not a lake of life. It's not a stagnant pool. It is a pure river. It's ever flowing. And John, you might ask John, where does this life flow from? And we're told it's proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Life proceeds from God. God is a God of life. He's a giver of life. He's a God of the living, not of the dead. Everything that we have, every breath that we take tonight has proceeded from God and out of the Lamb. He, Jesus is the life. He's the resurrection and the life. We have no life apart from Jesus Christ. And the way back to God is the way provided by God. And the way provided by God is his Lamb. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. That's his own words. And friends, you need to give up. Give up every notion that you will get yourself right with God, that you will get yourself to heaven without God's Lamb. There's no way to heaven. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ and by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But drink of him. He freshly supplies this living water. Um, I'm going to take you to, I think, three other places in the Bible tonight. We're going to, we're going to go to John's Gospel, chapter 7 that we might understand um, something of this living water and of the free supplies. And uh, in John chapter 7, at uh, the last day of the feast, verse 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. We thought this morning, if you were here this morning, the place that Jesus Christ was glorified was on the cross where sinners despised him, but he was glorified and uh, saved sinners, even those, even to this day, who have despised him and counted him as nothing. He's the river. He's the water. He provides all. The Son of God procures for us the gift of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God dwells in us who believe in God. And the Spirit of God guarantees our entrance into what we're reading off in Revelation 22. Praise the Lord. Uh, and as John tries to describe the indescribable, one of the things he wants to bring to us is just the absolute abundance of what he's seeing. That's verse 2. Um, I mean, out of verse 2, you just have to see abundance. Uh, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, yielded her fruit every month, just on and on. It's just, this is abundance of blessing that has been pictured here. 
Um, he, will, he just supplies and supplies, or even as we've sung tonight, he giveth, he giveth, he giveth again. Uh, he will do that for all eternity, for those who believe and trust in him, who love him. There's a tree of life, and it's always supplying. Uh, you know, eternal life is that. It's everlasting life. Um, we have no concept of eternity. We're creatures of time by eternity, and for all, all eternity, on and on, life and life and life. There'll be no death there. And, and there's just a supply for all. Is it? You know, the, the leaves of the tree for, were for the healing of the nations. From every nation, people have come. Uh, and even tonight, from every nation, all may come. There's still a way in. And, and friend, you need to know there's an invitation to come and to, and to drink. And when you're weary and done and you're done with sin and you're done with death and decay and you're done with worthlessness and, and there's life and there's waters of life and abundance for anyone. And the Lamb removed the curse. As verse 3, there should be no more curse. Why is there no more curse? So if you're able, we're going to take you back to Galatians. It's in the New Testament. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians 3. How was the curse removed? And what we're told in Revelation 3, in Galatians 3 and elsewhere, is that cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. And Jesus became a curse. And so in Galatians 3, verse 13, we read, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. I go home and read those words again. You'll never, you'll never fathom it. Being made a curse for us. He wasn't made a curse for good people. He was made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why was he made a curse? So that, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. There's no more curse because the curse has been laid on him. And he became a curse so that the blessings of Abraham might flow to us. Abram was told of these future blessings. He was told of everlasting life. He was told that he would be a blessing to many nations. And in Abraham and in Abraham's seed, there would be a number as the sand on the seashore for multitude. That's what John's seeing in Revelation. There's no more curse. We could never remove the curse. Jesus took it upon himself that the blessings might flow. Look at the blessings for it. I mean, how the blessings come to us. And they all come by the Lamb. And you see the table in front of you, and that's how all the blessings have come. Because there's a body represented here that's broken, nailed to a tree, and broken under the wrath of God. And there's a cup on the table. It speaks of the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed so that the blessings of God, blessings beyond number, would fall upon us after the wrath of God fell on God's Son. Friend, we're in Christ Jesus. We're one day's march nearer home. It's not a return to Eden. It's got some things in common with Eden. But believe me, it's far, far more than Eden ever was. 
It's not a garden, no matter how big that garden was in Eden. It's a glorified cosmos, a new heaven and a new earth. And the Lord is king, and life is everlasting, and the Lord is all the glory, and his, uh, the Lamb is there, and his servants gladly serve him. Serve him. Every day, but none, no, none more so than days like this, in days of unbearable sorrow and grief and crying and pain. We look up, and our Savior's coming, and there's an eternity of no mores, and an eternity that is far more amazing and wonderful than has ever entered into your imagination or mine. May Jesus Christ be praised. This passing world will soon be finished. And when this passing world is done, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not till then, how much I owe. Then we'll see the canvas. And what a beautiful tapestry it will be, all the threads worn, uh, sewn together, and a glory prepared by Jesus Christ. Not till then will we fully know, not till then, how much we owe. We're going to sing uh, 820. When this passing world is done, when has sunk yon radiant sun? When I stand with Christ on high, looking o'er life's history, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not till then, how much I owe.
Father God, we thank you again uh, for the prospect of glory and of that place of no mores and that place that is far more than we can imagine or think. Until, Lord, you take us there or until Jesus comes, we gather to remember him as he has so ordained. And we pray, Lord God, uh, for all those who love and adore thee, that you would bind us together in a sweet and true fellowship, our fellowship here on earth and a fellowship with thee in heaven. May we know holy communion. Lord, we pray uh, for any who are leaving, your blessing would rest on them. So, Lord, receive our thanks for your goodness to us this day, for your sustaining grace, and bless us as we gather around this thy table to worship, to thank you, to remember Jesus, and to give you praise. Amen. <laughs>